And now, Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sound of suspense. Welcome to the fear you can hear. But mostly, welcome to the world of terrifying imagination. In this story, you're going to meet what some people call a shutterbug. You know what a shutterbug is. The kind of person who never goes anywhere without a camera swinging from a strap around his neck who is never content unless they're aiming a lens in your direction, whether you want to be photographed or not. But unfortunately, this particular bug is the kind that many people want to crush under their feet. Our mystery drama, A Choice of Witnesses, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Paul Hecht. It begins on a warm day in early spring, the kind of day which tempts office workers to leave their desks and stroll through the nearest park on the noon hour. Among the strollers is an amiable young man named Gordon Bailey, who is enjoying the sunshine so much that he's taken a sandwich lunch to a park bench. He knows it's not going to be a very good sandwich. His wife, Pam, prepared it with her own loving hands. And even after two years of marriage, Pam seems unable to cope with even a hard-boiled egg. Oh, uh, excuse me, mister. Okay if I sit down here? Oh, yeah, sure. Plenty of room. Thanks. <laughs> nice day, ain't it? Yeah. It's about time we had some good weather. That's a good idea. I mean, uh, bringing your lunch to the park. Oh, that's my wife's idea. We're on an economy drive. Yeah, money's tight these days. Very tight. Um, one line of work did you say you were in? Oh, <laughs> I think I said I was in the insurance business. No kidding. Well, now, that's what I call a good business. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> hey, that ought to be a cute picture, huh? That little squirrel up there, cute as a bug, huh? Well, you like to take pictures of squirrels? Well, me, I like to take pictures of everything. In fact, I do this for a living. Oh, you're a professional photographer? Yeah, kind of. I make a buck out of it sometimes. I suppose you sell pictures to the newspapers? Oh, no, no. I never sold no pictures of the papers. I sell them to people. Well, well, I guess I'll be uh, heading back for work. Uh, wait just a minute, Mr. Bailey. I don't remember telling you my name. Well, I guess I know your name on account of the badge. Badge? What are you talking about? The badge you wore at the convention at the hotel in Atlantic City. Oh, wait a minute. You were at the insurance convention last month? Yeah, I was there. I get a lot of good pictures at conventions. Some of my best. I see, or uh, maybe I don't. Well, you know how it is. A bunch of guys get away from home, away from the wife. They do a lot of crazy things. Oh, uh, would you like to see the picture? Uh, of the insurance convention? I'll tell you the truth, Mr. Uh, My uh, name is Kellerman. Frankly, I just don't understand why you'd be carrying around pictures of a bunch of drunken insurance men. <laughs> yeah, you were gassed, all right. I've never seen anybody more gassed than you were, Mr. Bailey. You don't mean you have pictures of me? Yeah. That's what I was trying to tell you. You like to see them? They're real beauts. I don't think I ever took better, Mr. Bailey. All right. All right, let me see them. Oh, yeah, sure. Here they are. I'm in my pocket here. Yeah. Look at this one. Oh, no. She was really stacked, huh? How did you get this? Well, I told you with my trusty little camera. But how? Hey, come on. What do you think? I'm not giving away no professional secrets. You were in that hotel room? Here she let you into that room, didn't she? You must have been hiding someplace. Hey, 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 don't do that. Don't tear that. What do you up? think I'm going to do with him? Oh, 
Oh, Mom, Mr. Bailey, you know I got negatives. I can print up 2,000 of them if I want. What is this? Blackmail or something? Nah, nah, nah. It's like a business deal, that's all. I figure I got some pictures that you want to buy. And I got them to sell. How much did you pay her for the privilege of being in that room? The question is, how much are you willing to pay? I mean, so your wife don't get a complete set. Look, are you willing to sell me the negatives? I didn't say that. I got a different kind of deal of mine. You know what would happen if I told the police about this? Well, a guy did that to me once. It was a meatpackers convention. He called the cops. They hauled me in. I said I was just a photographer working a convention. That's all. I was selling pictures of the guys there. He couldn't prove nothing against me on a account of you know why? It was true. I am a photographer. I do work conventions. I sell regular type pictures, too. But they're not as profitable as these, are they? You know, that guy became one of my steadiest customers. Only then his wife divorced him anyway. He wouldn't make no more payments. Payments? Are you saying this is a regular thing? How much you iron at that insurance company? I figure a young guy like you, they pay about uh, 15, 18,000 a year, am I right? Listen to me, Kellerman. The woman at that convention, I... I didn't want to get mixed up with her. I, I was just so tight, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Ah, oh, hey, you don't have to tell me about stuff like that, Mr. Bailey. I've been around plenty. I know how guys no, are. No, 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 you don't understand... Look, I, I'm only married two years. I, I love my wife very much. And the only reason I got into that stupid mess was... It was because of my boss. I, I didn't want to insult him. He he was drunker than I was. Oh, come on, Mr. Bailey. You don't have to explain nothing to me. I know you don't want that nice little wife of yours to see these dirty pictures. And I don't want to show them to her, believe me. She'd never understand. Pam would never... Listen. Listen, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a flat price for the negatives, and that'll be it. Understand? I, I got a nice bonus recently. I'll give you uh, 300 cash tomorrow afternoon. How does that sound? Now, listen to me, Mr. Bailey. People are real funny about this kind of business. They never believe a guy like me can, well, like, be honest, you know? Honest? <laughs> That's some word. Well, Come what on. I mean is, they always think that if they pay me a flat fee, I'll be coming back at them again. You see what I mean? Even if I did give you the negatives, you'd figure I had copies someplace that I could hit you again any time, right? Look, I'm willing to take your word for it. Nah, Mr. Bailey, nah. You just spend the rest of your life worrying about me coming back, am I right? But this way, you just make one small payment to me every month. Like you pay the electric bill at a rent, you know? How much? How much do I have to pay? I figure you for about, uh, 40 bucks a month. Now, that's not so terrible, is it? Just 40 bucks a month? How do you collect the money? Oh, in person, Mr. Bailey. I just go around to all my customers once a month, and I collect in person. <laughs> it's better that way, believe me. Forty dollars. It's four eighty a year. You never miss it. And everything will just be fine between you and the missus. That you, honey? Yeah, it's me. Hey, shut up, you mutt. Hi, darling. Oh, be quiet, Lockjaw. It's your Lord and Master. I'm sorry I'm late. I decided to do a little Christmas shopping after work. I forgot how long it takes to fight those crowds. Oh, what a gorgeous package. Uh, is that something for me? Never mind. <laughs> well, just in case it is, here's a big kiss in advance. Mm. Hey, you smell good. Is that a new perfume? Mm -mm. It's the same old stuff. The one I'm practically out of. Hint, hint, hint. Oh, cut out that hinting. <laughs> I've already spent more money than I should. Oh, uh, speaking of money, that man was here. What man? Well, you know, the one that comes around every month. That Mr. Uh, Kellerman. Kellerman? What the heck was he doing here? It's only the 19th. Well, I don't know, Gordon, but he was here just the same, looking for you. What did he say? Nothing. Just that he'd be back later. Later today? Mm-hmm. You know, Gordon, I just can't bear that awful little man. Did you ever get a look at his eyes? And that camera he wears around his neck? Listen, is he going to be coming around every single month? I told you, honey, he's collecting payments on the car. 
Well, why can't you make the payments by mail? Maybe because that's the way he likes it. Maybe he moves around a lot. Well, he gives me the creeps. You want to get that, honey? I'm feeding the dog. Yeah, okay, I got it. Oh, it's you. Evening, Mr. Bailey. I heard you came earlier today. Yeah, but you aren't home yet. Hope I didn't disturb your wife too much. Look, we'll talk in the hallway. Oh, yeah, of course. All right. What's this early visit all about? You going away for the holidays? Oh, no. I never go anywhere this time of year. This is one of my busiest times of year, you know? <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I get some of my best pictures around now. Huh? You'd be surprised. You know how it is. People get all filled up with the Christmas spirit. All right, all right. Get to the point. You want your payment now? Well, I wouldn't mind, of course, but uh, that's not the reason I came around, Mr. Bailey. You see, I want to tell you that uh, the payments are going to go up. What? I really hate to do it, but it's the inflation, you know? Everything costs more, food, clothing, film, gasoline... I just got to have an increase, Mr. Bailey. I'm sorry. How much of an increase? Well, just another $15 a month. Fifteen? Terrific. Now it's 55 What's it going to be a couple of months from now? Oh, shut up, Lockjaw. Hey, excuse me, Mr. Bailey? Yeah. What it... What can I do for you? Uh, may I talk to you for a moment? Do, do I know you? Uh, no, I don't think you do. My name is Bliss. Uh, Dave Bliss. Yeah? Uh, look, can we sit down and talk a minute? Well, it's kind of chilly. Why don't we talk standing up? I'm trying to walk my dog, and so far he's he's been a non-performer. Well, I want to talk to you about Ed Kellerman. I don't know any Ed Kellerman. Well, I know you do, Mr. Bailey. I made it my business to find out. Now, I'm not asking what he's got on you, Mr. Bailey. I'm sorry, you're making a mistake. It doesn't matter. I won't ask you why Kellerman is blackmailing you. I expect you'd do as much for me. Only, would you mind telling me how much you pay him? He hits me for 60 a month. Used to be 40. Price went up last month. 55. You mind paying him? <laughs> Of course I mind. So do I. I'd mind if it was ten bucks a month. And not just because of the money. I hate that slimy man, and I'm sure you hate him as much as I do. Now, that's why I wanted to talk to you about putting a stop to him. A permanent stop. You mean going to the police? No. That's not good enough. I'm talking about killing him. Every problem has a solution, they say. And Mr. Dave Bliss seems to have arrived at his. The obvious question here is, do two wrongs make a right? We'll find out what Mr. Gordon Bailey thinks about that dilemma when we return shortly with Act Two. Blackmail is an interesting, if dishonorable, crime. It has the unusual facility of making the criminal feel virtuous himself. After all, he's only punishing wrongdoers by making them pay for their sins. But the profession has some serious drawbacks. For one thing, it inspires one's victims to think in drastic terms. And when there are more than one victim... And they meet. Well. Mr. Bliss, I know how you must feel about Kellerman, and you're right. He is one of the slimiest characters who ever crawled out from under a rock. Those eyes. You ever get a look at his eyes, Mr. Bailey? My wife can't stand the sight of him. Well, I'm not married. It's my job he's threatening. Is it your marriage he's after? Ah, uh, never mind. I don't want to know any details. None of us know each other's problems. None of us. You mean you know others beside me? Well, I know others. How come? 
Well, I made it my business to find others. Oh. One day when I got fed to the teeth with Mr. Kellerman and his payments and his wet eyes, I decided to find out more about our friend. So when he left one day, I followed him. Uh-huh. Followed him on his rounds. And that's how you found me. Yeah, that's right. You're in the root book, Mr. Bailey, just like all the rest of us. How many are there? Now, there's no way of telling for sure. All I managed to find was a dozen, an even dozen. <laughs> Man really gets around. He keeps raising his price. Do you know that? He's only had me in his bag for about six months. This is my fifth. But others I've spoken to, they say he raises the ante every few months. Three of the people I've talked to are paying well over a hundred. Mr. Kellerman does very well, that's obvious. Yeah, too well. <laughs> you know something? It's funny, but... Well, it's kind of a relief to know that I'm not alone. Yes, that's what I felt at first. Misery loves company. But the satisfaction doesn't last, Mr. Bailey. You still live every day of your life with that sword over your head. I know, I know, but it's still not a reason for using words like... like killing. Don't you know that's the only possible way to deal with a blackmailer? I wouldn't know. Kellerman's my first. Well, think about it. No, no, you must have thought about it already. You wouldn't be human if you hadn't thought about it. It crossed my mind. Not that I should kill Kellerman, just the wish that he were dead. That someone else would kill him. Yeah. I guess I wouldn't shed too many tears. You just didn't want to dirty your own hands. I didn't want to take care of one problem and have another one even worse. And don't tell me that doesn't make sense. The only thing that makes sense is making Kellerman a corpse. I'm sorry. I'm just not interested in anything like that. The others weren't either. Not at first. But now. Now they all are. All? Look, what are you talking about? We all want to get rid of Kellerman. We want to kill him. And so do you. That's a lie. You hate his guts as much as we do, Mr. Bailey. Why don't you admit it? Of course I hate him, but that doesn't mean I'm... It doesn't mean I'm ready to commit murder. Well, we're ready, Mr. Bailey. And you better be, too. Ready for what? To commit murder. If you don't mind my saying it, a perfect murder. Perfect? Foolproof. I'm sorry. Look, that's a stupid dream, and you know it. Ah, uh-huh. you won't say that after you've heard the idea. Everybody who sets out to commit a crime thinks it's foolproof. They wouldn't commit it otherwise. Right now, all I want to know is if you'll cooperate. That's easy. No. Why not? Because murder is worse than blackmail, that's why. Well, this isn't murder. We're going to erase a human mistake. Forget it. Look, I'll make believe I never heard you say it. Come on. Come on, Lockjaw. Come on, girl. Let's get our business over with. There wasn't one person on the list I didn't have to convince. But when I told them that there was no chance of any of us being caught, that's when they dropped their objections. All right. What foolproof scheme for murder do you have? It's foolproof because it won't be murder. It'll be an accident. If anyone gets into trouble, it'll be me. Just me. I'm going to kill Kellerman with my car when he's making the rounds one night. I have the time and place all figured out just before midnight on Carroll Street. An accident? Right. So now you know the favor I'm doing you. I'm taking the risk all by myself. You think the police are that stupid? Murderers get caught even when they frame accidents. Oh, this is different. Why? Because of the witnesses. What? I'm going to have witnesses. A lot of them. All disinterested parties. Nothing to connect them with each other. And they'll all tell exactly the same story. What they saw... How it was all Kellerman's fault, getting hit by my car. All right, all right, all right, stop. Don't tell me any more. You've already told me too much. No, you've got to hear the rest of it. You're a part of this like everyone else. Don't you see the beauty of it? Safety in numbers? If you ask me, you'll all get caught. No, no. Don't you understand? When a group of citizens all testify exactly the same way, I mean reliable citizens from every walk of life, (laughs) you ought to meet some of Kellerman's victims. One is a college professor, two are doctors, there are four housewives, a bartender who owns his own joint, one working stiff, one person in city government. Uh, You might as well know, that's me. Bliss. 
Wait a minute, I've seen your name. Something about the Transportation Authority? One of them is in the insurance business. Uh. They're all with me, Mr. Bailey. Every one of them has agreed. So many witnesses to one accident? Well, we won't need everyone. Some of them won't be asked any questions by the police, but they'll all be there just the same. Uh, we'd like you there, too. You're nuts. Do you know that? You and, and, and the rest of... I won't have any part of this. Don't you see? It can't miss. It doesn't matter. I don't want to have any part in killing a man. <laughs> How come, Mr. Bailey? Have you got religious scruples or something? Maybe. You've got scruples, but you did something rotten enough to make you a blackmailer's victim. I didn't commit murder. Look, you got a good idea about getting everyone together. Maybe, maybe if we all went to the police. Oh, no way. Whatever it is you don't want known about yourself, my friend, it'll come out the minute Kellerman gets arrested. Now, now my way is better. I can't buy it. Look, I'm sorry. My dog is getting tired, and so am I. Come on. Come on, Lockjaw. Now, wait a minute now. You want my advice, Bliss? Don't go through with this. Find some other way. There has to be one. Goodbye. Bailey. Yeah? What if we do it? You'll be sorry, that's what. Sorry? Why? Because you'll tell the police the truth? I didn't say that. Goodbye, Mr. Bliss. Hello. Evening, Mr. Bailey. How are you? I'm all right, Bliss. What do you want? You going to be busy tomorrow night? What do you mean, busy? Well, some of the gang are getting together tomorrow night at the corner of Carroll Street and 9th Avenue about 9.30. How about coming down? You might see something interesting. Look, you can't go through with this. We're all in it together, remember? You might not have to do a thing. Just stand there and see it happen. That ought to be satisfying all by itself. I won't be there. Well, we'd sure like to have you, Bailey. You won't get away with this. Nobody ever does. Oh, shut up, Lockjaw. What's the matter with you tonight? Gordon? Yeah? Do you think Lockjaw's all right? She keeps staring at the door and growling. I don't know. Must hear the neighbors or something. Oh, maybe she's waiting to bark at that man, the collector, you know? Kellerman? Uh-huh. Isn't he coming tonight? He usually comes on the last Sunday of the month, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, usually. Well, I doubt if he'll be here tonight. It's almost 11 now. Oh. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that late. You haven't done much this evening. Don't you feel all right? Yeah, sure, sure. I, I'm all right. Will you... You just seem to be, well, waiting. Was it for that man? Because if it was, well, I'm, I'm sure he's not coming, honey. I think we ought to go to bed and listen yeah. to the news or something. Oh, the news. Yeah, I guess it's on right now, isn't it? Just about. You want me to turn it on here? Yeah, sure, would you? Okay. The conference, now postponed until February, will include top officials from both nations. <laughs> on the local front. A man who has been identified as Edward Kellerman of 1811 Kellerman. Sudworth Avenue... Shh, shh. Gordon, do you suppose he's the same man? automobile tonight on the corner of Carroll Street and 9th Avenue. The driver of the car, city administration official David Bliss, was released after questioning. Five witnesses on the scene of the accident testified that Kellerman had stepped into the automobile's path For as it rounded the corner. Sake. In sports, the Golden Warriors... Shut it up, pal. Uh, Gordon... Do you suppose it's that man, the collector? You think that's the reason he didn't come around tonight? It would be a good enough reason, wouldn't it? If he was dead, lying in the middle of the street, dead. You look so strange. Gordon, did you like that man? If you want to know the truth, Pam, I hated him. You did? Why? Just on general principles. I really don't understand you sometimes, Gordon. Uh, hand me, hand me the phone book, huh? Okay. Thanks. Here. Right. You gonna call somebody? Uh, honey, uh, why don't you go to bed? I, I'll be in in a few minutes. Yeah, but but who are you calling? Just someone I know, uh, someone who knew Kellerman. Oh, I see. 
to find out if they know about what happened to him. Right? Yeah, 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 that's right. Okay, honey, I'll go in then. I'm feeling a little tired. Yeah, so am I. I'll be right. Good night, sweetheart. Uh-huh. Good night. David Bliss? Yes, who's this? Gordon Bailey. What do you want? I heard the news tonight. About Kellerman. Well, you don't have to thank me. I did it for myself. And you did go through with it, eh? You can relax now, friend. You've just saved yourself 55 bucks a month, maybe a lot more. Your remittance man won't be coming around again. You ought to go out and celebrate. I know what I ought to do. What's that? So long, Bliss. I just wanted to make sure. Hey, Bailey. Obviously, there's one thing you can say for David Bliss. He's a man of his word. And because Mr. Bliss kept his word, two indifferent interns are now lifting the mortal remains of Mr. Edward Kellerman and depositing them in the efficient cold filing cabinet of the city morgue awaiting for someone to claim the body. But who cares about a dead blackmailer? Possibly Mr. Gordon Bailey. We'll find out shortly when I return with Act Three. As David Bliss and company manage to commit the perfect crime, so it seems, since the death certificate for Edward Kellerman simply states the cause of death as accidental, at least a dozen people know otherwise, but they remain silent, feeling not grief, but relief. The only one who finds it difficult to maintain that silence is the one victim of Ed Kellerman who was not on the corner of Carroll Street and Ninth Avenue that fateful night. Honey, do you know it's almost two o'clock in the morning? Oh, is it? Really? You know, I honestly think you are coming down with something. A virus, maybe. Pam, will you please stop fussing? You're beginning to sound like my mother. Well, I certainly wouldn't want to do that. I'm just trying to get you to go to sleep. You've got a job to go to tomorrow. You know, it's funny about my mother. When I was growing up, she made me feel that there was something... I don't know, something so profound about religion. Well, if you ask me, she just likes the bingo games. My father was that way, too. But ne- neither one of them really seemed to live their religion. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, they talked about loving their neighbors and so forth, but they didn't love them at all. They were always saying the nastiest things about them. Well, that's how people are. When I was in my teens, I used to call them hypocrites. Now, I just wonder if I'm any different than they were. I really don't think I am. Different how? Well, about things like the Ten Commandments, for instance. I wonder if there's one I haven't broken. I hope you haven't coveted your neighbor's wife. That's about the only one I can remember. I remember them all. You do? Yeah, I won a prize in Bible class when I was only eight for reciting all of them. Thou shalt not this, thou shalt not that. There are only eight shalt nots. Thou shalt... Have no other gods beside me. Thou shalt not worship any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Thou shalt not kill. Yeah, sure. I'll have that file completed in time for the meeting. Right, oh, Phil. Bye. Oh, Sylvia, did you reach that number yet? No. Okay, well, buzz me if you do. All right, now, let's see about that actuarial table. Hello. All right, Bailey. What is it now? Hello, Mr. Bliss. I've been having a lot of trouble reaching you this morning. Well, I haven't been at my desk. I was wondering if you might be free for lunch. Sorry. I'd really like a chance to talk to you. About what? About some mutual friends of ours. If we're talking about the same thing, Bailey, they're not mutual friends. They're all strangers, complete strangers, just like you and me. Well, that's something I'd like to rectify. Would you have lunch with me, all right? All right. Where? 
Uh, suppose we meet somewhere halfway. Uh, I know you're in the city hall area. I'm on Wall Street. How about uh, Mercury's? Do you know it? I'll see you there at 12.30. That's fine. All right, Bailey, let's have it. You don't want a social lunch. You have something on your mind. You're right. Something I can't get off my mind. How about our old friend Kellerman, I suppose? You remember what you said about him? How he was a sword hanging over your head? So? He's still that for me, Mr. Bliss. He is exactly that. Kellerman is dead. He won't be ringing your doorbell anymore. How come you're not grateful for that? If Kellerman had really been hit by a car, if he had a heart attack or something, yes, I admit I would be glad about it. I would have gone out and celebrated. I would have slept very well at night. But the way things are, I'm not sleeping at all. Try pills. I'm just sorry you ever came up to me in that park. If I didn't... If I didn't know it was going to happen the way it happened, it never would have bothered me. But I do know. And it bothers me too much. So? The thing is, I don't know if I can live with it. You want to be more specific? I don't know if I can spend the rest of my life with this thing on my conscience. Your conscience? <laughs> Look... You had nothing to do with Kellerman's death. I don't know what you think Kellerman had on me, Bliss, but it wasn't anything illegal. Just immoral, right? It was something stupid I did. Well, there was nothing stupid about what we did. Wasn't it? Are you really so sure you've committed the perfect murder? Shut up! Don't you ever use that word in front of me. You're still afraid, aren't you? Afraid of being found out. It can't happen. Not as long as we all stick together. Oh, safety in numbers, right? When the police came, they only questioned four of them. Every single one told the same story. There was no reason to doubt their word. Why should there be? Because there was no connection between them. Right. They were all strangers. Nothing to tie them to each other. Except Kellerman. What about the records he might have kept? His, his little black notebook, for instance. We thought of that, too. First thing we did when we went to his body was lift that book right out of his pocket. Oh, what about the apartment? What about all the stuff he had there? The second thing we lifted was the key to his apartment. One of our guys, a Joe, the bartender, went straight there. He cleaned out every scrap of paper in the place, every single one of his rotten photographs. You were very thorough, weren't you? Yeah. We were thorough, Bailey. And you ought to be grateful, not worried. But I am worrying. I'm worrying about whether or not I should... Go on. Whether or not you should what? Bailey, are you thinking about going to the police? It occurred to me. You mean you'd turn me in? I don't know. I just don't know. Did it ever occur to you to turn Kellerman in? Yes, often. But did you? No. Why not? Wasn't he committing a crime? Wasn't he disturbing your precious sleep, too? Yes, yes, he but was. But you didn't turn him in because you were afraid for yourself. Isn't that the truth? Yes. I suppose so. So all this morality of yours, this conscience you talk about, you didn't discover you had any until Kellerman was gone, until he was no longer a threat to you. Isn't that true? I still say blackmail isn't murder. Bailey... I've got news for you. I wasn't going to tell you this unless it was absolutely necessary. Tell me what? Kellerman may be gone, but his photographs are still around. What? You heard me. We have all of Kellerman's negatives, all the dirty pictures he ever took. Most of them have been returned to his victims. Everyone who cooperated with us. I see. That means we have your pictures, too, my friend. You understand? And if I don't cooperate, I get a new blackmailer. Is no, that it? No, no, that isn't the way it is at all. Kellerman bled you, Bailey. Every month he came whistling up to your front door asking for money. 
more and more money all the time. But that's over now. Done and finished. But what you're saying is, if I go to the police, the photographs go where I don't want them to go. I'm sorry to use Kellerman's own tactics, but you're forcing my hand. Bailey, please use your head. You've got nothing to gain and everything to lose. Somebody's done you a favor. The only way to show your gratitude is to forget it. What do you say? Well, I'll think about it. That's all I can tell you. Want any more coffee, honey? No, thanks. You look so... so tense, Gordon. Yeah, I guess I have been acting pretty jumpy tonight. Well, you've hardly said two words to me since you came home. The thing is... I've been thinking a lot, Pam. About what? About... whether I had the nerve to tell you something... Something that happened about, well, seven months ago. What do you mean? Pam, you remember that insurance convention I went to back in July in Atlantic City? Of course I remember. I, I couldn't go with you because of Mother being in the hospital. I wish you had been with me. Then nothing would have happened. Ha what what did happen? Did, did you get into some kind of trouble? Yeah. Yeah, I got myself into trouble by... By being stupid, by drinking too much and letting Hal Emmons drink too much. Emmons? You mean your supervisor? I, I was still new on the job. You remember, Pam? I wanted to make good. Yeah? I was afraid of Emmons taking a dislike to me, afraid of crossing him. When we both got drunk that second night, Emmons insisted that we pick up these girls oh, at the bar. Gordon! Park. Honey, I swear, I, I didn't want anything to do with it. I, I wasn't the least bit interested, but, you know, Emmons is the kind of guy who uses conventions to... Swing a little, you know. I, I told him I was crazy about my wife, that home cooking was good enough for me, but he just pressured me, Pam. Oh, Pam, can I make you understand? Well, go on. What happened? Well, we brought the girls upstairs. Oops. They had adjoining rooms. They were professionals, you <gasps> see. Gordon. Oh, honey. Gordon, why do you have to tell me about this? Please don't cry. I wouldn't have known if you hadn't told me. It's on my conscience, Pam. You're good. Oh, sure, I could have kept my mouth shut, but well, I guess I, I needed to tell you. I guess I wanted you to know so that you could forgive me. Gordon. I've been tortured about it for months, honey. You have no idea what torture it's been for me. But that's the dumbest thing of all. Don't you think I would have forgiven you a long time ago? Yeah. Oh, please. Hold me, Gordon. Honey, please. please. It'll never happen again, honey. I swear. Oh, oh dear. darn it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I was just getting cozy. Okay, I'll, I'll get it. Hello. Mr. Bailey, Dave Bliss here. What do you want? I have something for you, a present. What is it? About half a dozen photographs and the original negatives. I decided they really belong to you. Uh, that if you knew you were really out of danger, you'd sleep a great deal better. Do you want them? All right. Uh, put them in my mail, uh, to my office. And have some secretary open them by mistake? No, I don't think you'd care for that. Well, you could mark it personal. Supposing I hand them over in person, tonight. Whereabouts? Well, right now I'm in a bar called Adam and Eve's on 12th and Walnut. I'll be here for another hour if you can make it. Otherwise, well, it'll have to be some other time, that's all. Oh, well. All right. All right, I'll be there in half an hour. Gordon, you're not going out. Just for a little while, honey. I got some client business. Besides, I can use a little fresh air. You're not still feeling bad, are you? No, no. I, I, I feel just fine. I never felt better. <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy to do this, Bailey. Maybe I'm putting my neck into a noose, giving you back these photographs. And why are you doing it? Because of what you said to me. You said I was just becoming another blackmailer, another Kellerman. And I guess you were right. If I held on to these, I'd have become the very thing I despised. Well, I give you credit for honesty, Bliss. I hope that having these will change your mind about going to the police... 
I hope you'll realize that I did the right thing, that we all did the right thing. I can't answer that. Then you're still thinking about it? You want to know something? I told my wife tonight about these. What? I told her all about the girl in Atlantic City. She knows exactly what happened. Oh, that doesn't mean to say she wouldn't be horrified to see it in black and white. That's why I'm glad to have these pictures. What else can I say but thanks? You could say that you won't go to the police, ever. Sorry. I can't make any promises. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. I was afraid you felt that way. Well, let's have another drink, okay? No, no, not for me. Just one more. Hey, Joey. Coming. Really, I, I, I have to be going. My wife's waiting at home for me. What'll it be, Mr. Bliss? It's trouble, Joey. All the trouble we can handle. Yeah. I figured it had to be. Hey. Hey, what is this? Sit right there, mister. Put that gun away. Oh, my God, Bliss, what are you doing? Go on, Joey. All right, all right, all right. Let's get the story straight now. What happened here, Joey? Well, look, Sergeant, you know me. You know I don't like trouble in my joint. Well, what did the guy do? Try to hold you up? That's right. He'd come in, he sat down at the bar, he pulled out a forty-five and stuck it in my gut. Well, that's a strange one, all right. I mean, the guy was some kind of insurance executive. Is that so right here on his business card? Well, he card. must have gone off his nuts, Sergeant. Look, you can ask anybody, all of my customers. This gentleman right here was at the bar. Yes, officer. My name is David Bliss. I'm with the city, officer, and the bartender's right. The guy just sat down and... Pulled out the gun. Yeah, that's true. And when the bartender tried to grab it away from him, it went off. What's your name, lady? Mrs. Edith Chester. It was a pure case of self-defense, Sergeant. I'm just glad nobody else got hurt, you know. Yeah, yeah, you were lucky, Joey. You were all lucky. Okay, I'll need some statements now from some of you other witnesses. <laughs> And so, for poor Gordon Bailey, there was no safety in numbers, only extinction. We admit that this is a grim demonstration of the old saying that, in union, there is strength. But we sincerely trust that justice finally prevailed. I'll be back shortly. If there's a moral to this story, it might be that eyewitnesses can't always be trusted, even when they're being honest. Of course, we don't worry about your eyes on this program. We're interested in your ears, and we have good news for you. Many thousands of ears are now listening to these exercises in imagination. We hope you'll continue to be an ear witness. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Evie Juster, Ralph Bell, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.